Good day, ladies, envies, and etc. As I'm writing this, it's been around 12 hours since I gave my Discord community their 14th challenge. For those who are new around here, I give my community challenges every week or so, and we can see who can perform the best in them. While these runs can look like they're just a bunch of muffins, murder, and mayhem, there's also a lot of planning and thought going into these runs in the background. Unfortunately for my community challengers, I don't like it when people think, so our current challenge is in Freelancer, Hitman's new flashy game mode that's all about RNG and improvisation. The challenge is to kill a syndicate leader in a showdown with an explosive rubber duck and leave. That's it. Whoever gets the best time on a map gets a point, and whoever's the most points out of a possible 19 wins the challenge. Thus, this challenge encompasses almost every map in the world of assassination. Paris, Kaido, Mumbai, Chongqing, everything is on the table, just waiting to be taken. One thing that's important to note is that in normal freelancer gameplay, you're not supposed to be able to do showdowns quickly. You're supposed to investigate a group of suspects to find which one is the syndicate leader, but fortunately, there's a way around that. You can load into the showdown, and then you can close the game to go back to when you were at the safe house before starting the mission. Everything in the mission, the target, the lookouts, the spawn locations, all of it is persistent, even if you quit. This is how we do these showdowns so quickly. Each runner has already played it, identified the target, and gone back to the safe house before starting their run. For the record, I highly discourage exploiting this in normal play unless you've suffered a bug. Freelancer is supposed to be all about clever improvising to win despite the odds, and alt f 4 every time you fuck up is just robbing yourself of fundamental gameplay mechanics. While it's necessary for an optimal speedrun, it's generally not any more fun in normal play than just playing the base game. Now, to save you guys from watching 10 days of submissions for 19 different speedrunning categories, I'm going to summarize most of these runs, but I promise you that we'll watch at least one run for every mission. The first run was submitted less than an hour after I made the announcement. It was Magica who detonated the first duck, as you can see here. Welcome to New York. Good work, 47. We finally tracked down the Syndicate leader's whereabouts. However, we do not know the exact identity of the target, so you'll have to do some recon. Nevertheless, we do know this. They are participating in a handover. We also have the following description on their looks. We know that they have red hair. They are wearing glasses. They are wearing a hat and has a tattoo. We also know that the target has a sweet tooth and they like to read, be it keeping up with the times or simply wanting to be inspired. I'm sorry we don't have more. Remember that to normal people, rubber ducks are toys. As such, the first person to see a rubber duck will always try to pick it up, unknowing of its explosive capabilities. Magica is picking up the keys to the armored truck in the garage, and blowing up the target here conveniently causes this guard to panic and open the door for her. Good work, 47. The leader has been eliminated. Thanks to the two-door rule, nobody in the security office could hear the explosion, so Magic has a straight shot to the truck. That's New York done in 1 minute 21 seconds, giving the first point to Magica. After Magica's run, we got a run that's just too funny for me to not show. To this is Hokkaido done by this Speedrunner in Training. Stand. We now know the leader's location. However, you will need to do some recon to make sure you get the right target. Feed throws the duck, detonates it, and hits everyone but the target. We also know that they have red. She gets him with the second duck, but the game takes too long to process the kill, and she gets worried that she somehow missed him again. Your target suffers from dehydration, and they smoke. I'm sorry we don't have more. You know what to do, 47. Now that Diane is congratulating her on the kill, she knows she's in the clear and can run to the gondola. The target is trying to escape. Return to the safe. That was a very messy Hokkaido in 36 seconds. Good show from speedrunner in training, who's earned the second point of the game. 
This will make anyone think twice before turning to a life of crime. Next, Magica is back, and they did Paris in 36 seconds while watching one of my streams on Twitch. We'll stipulate. We also have the, following description. the deaths only need to be caused by ducks. They don't need to be due to the duck explosions themselves. Regrettably, I don't give points for loyalty to the channel, but I do give points for winning Paris, which they did do successfully. Maya the Bee, one of my trusty Discord moderators, submitted a run of her own for Sapienza, which she set to Grieg. Once again, I'm sad that I don't give out style points, but Maya has still won a point of her own with a time of 1 minute 57 seconds in Sapienza. Our next participant is Hator360, one of my Twitch moderators, who submitted four runs in the same day. Three of these runs appear to have been part of a single campaign, which means they had to deal with the increased difficulty and prep time of a level 2, level 3, and level 4 syndicate, while everyone else stayed mostly on level 1. This was an absurd, even stupid move on Hator's part, which is exactly why I love it. Dumb shit is always welcome in the community challenges, and has won Hator four points in the first day for Dubai, Mumbai, Haven Island, and Bangkok. Shnam, another moderator, came next with a 158 on Marrakesh. Official policy is against modding the game in any way beyond using Peacock, but Shnam wasn't aware of my policy, and their run won't last long anyway, so I've allowed them to take the point for Marrakesh for now. The next map is Dartmoor, which was tackled by Gaming with Gritty. Welcome to Thornbridge Manor. This is the last stand. Yes, they are dressed as Sean Bean. Don't question it. You'll need to do some recon to make sure you get the right target. On the other hand, we do know this. They are here for a business meeting. As for the little identification we have on them, we know that they have blonde hair. They are wearing a hat. They are wearing a necklace. And has a tattoo. As for characteristics... Here, Gritty is going to use the lethal coin throw trick, which is done by locking onto someone and quickly switching to another item before throwing it. It's technically killing someone with an explosive duck, so it counts. Then they use some good positioning to jump off the building, presumably while thanking the gods, IO Interactive, for not implementing any kind of fall damage. <laughs> they detonate a concussion duck near the hearse, which is loud enough to distract the people close to it, but not to alert the guards watching the keys. Watch your flanks. That was Dartmoor finished Silent Assassin suit only in 56 seconds, giving Gaming with Gritty one point. Girl Corpse, who won the first ever community challenge, has also tossed her hat into the ring. She did a run of Santa Fortuna, which was notable for not being nearly as prepared as the other runs. Girl Corpse thought I banned the close app exploit, meaning she is the only run featuring anything resembling normal showdown gameplay, eliminating suspects until she found the target and blew them up. Santa Fortuna complete in 2 minutes 42 seconds, giving Girl Corpse her first point. Hmm. While all of this was going on, Magica was cleaning up. They did every map they could get their hands on before someone else got to it, which meant that in addition to their initial points in New York and Paris, they also earned points for Whittleton Creek, Miami, Colorado, Chongqing, Mendoza, the Isle of Scale, Ambrose Island, and Berlin. Magica holds 10 out of a possible 19 points, but most of these are secured by weak runs. Whether it's mistakes on her part or just plain inconvenient RNG, Magica is sitting atop a house of cards, and I don't expect it to last until my next update. Nobody actually competed with each other today. Everybody was focused on the communal effort of making sure every map had a run. Now that there are times to beat, I don't expect it will be long before people start gunning for Magica's points, and she better be ready to defend them. At the end of the day, we have 10 points for Magica, 4 for Hator, and 1 each for Girl Corpse, Shnom, Maya, Speed, and Gritty. Hello! This is the part of the video where I ask you to subscribe and turn on notifications. Anyway, 
Without any further ado, enjoy the next chapter in Community Challenge number 14, in which many new challengers arise. It's now been 48 hours since I've written my last update, and a lot of interesting stuff has happened. First, I was wrong about Magicka. I assumed that her points would quickly be stolen by other players, but it seems that her plurality is safe. My theory for this is that most of Magicka's runs aren't necessarily the best, but are secure enough and have been done on maps that are too intimidating or unpopular for other players to challenge her. Her 116 Isle of Scale or 115 Colorado could probably be beaten by someone with good enough RNG, but it's far too early for anyone to want to speedrun Colorado when Maya's point for a 157 Sapienza is ready for the taking. Speaking of stealing points, speedrunner in training has come back with a vengeance, first on Haven Island, formerly owned by Hador's 251. Welcome to the Maldives. It's time to put an end to them. The leader is currently operating in the area. However, we have very little intel on their identity. As to why they are here, well, we know this. They are here for a business meeting. We also know that they have red hair. They are wearing glasses. They are wearing a hat and has a tattoo. Furthermore, your target has a sweet tooth. And we know that they suffer from allergies. Use these traits to your advantage. Be careful, 47. The most Excellent work, 47. The leader has been eliminated. You should get back to the safe house. I'll contact you later. But clearly wasn't perfect, it's always a feat to cut a full two minutes off of a run that wasn't even three minutes long, especially considering that Speed doesn't own Haven Island. This is one of their first times playing this map at all. Impressive, 47. In addition to this, do you remember Gritty's run on Dartmoor? The one with the fancy throw in the fall, all done sasso with Sean Bean? Well, Speed beat their 58 second score by 12 seconds. Welcome to Thornbridge Manor. This is the last stand. We now know the leader's location. However, you will need to do some recon to make sure you get the right target. To help you, we have the following information. They are participating in a handover. We also have the following description on their looks. We know that they have grey hair, they are wearing a hat, they are sporting a tattoo, and glasses. We also know that the target is a smoker, and they suffer from dehydration. That's all I have. Godspeed, 47. Good job, 47. You eliminated the leader. You should get back to the safe house. I'll contact you later. This is one of my favorite parts of this challenge. It's not just skill. All too often these challenges can become whoever's the best runner that feels like participating, just wiping the floor with everybody else. Gritty undoubtedly had skill, but that skill has been challenged by Speed's dumb luck, and it lost. The chaos of Freelancer can reduce everyone to a quality for the random number generators that be, and I think that can make for a much more engaging community challenge than Girl Corpse kicking everyone's ass for the umpteenth time. While I doubt future challenges will be this RNG heavy, I'll be sure to keep in mind that just a little bit of chance can help. And finally, Speed also took Bangkok. Their target spawn RNG was so great that the ducks hadn't loaded into her inventory by the time 47 reached his target. Speed needed to pause for a few seconds just to be absolutely sure that the ducks would be there when she unpaused. They have black hair. They are wearing glasses. They are wearing earrings and wearing a necklace. As for characteristics, we know the target suffers from dehydration, and they smoke. That's all I have for you at present. Good luck, 47. Congratulations, 47. The leader is eliminated, sending a clear message. Fortunately, we use in-game time, so after using a wrench to fix herself an exit, Speed has finished Bangkok in only 28 seconds. This will make anyone think twice before turning to a life of crime. Next up is the return of Shnam, who stole Magicka's hold over Miami with a 119. Welcome to Miami. Good work, 47. We finally tracked down the Syndicate leader's whereabouts. Going with the theme of mod drama, Hador stole Maya's point in Sapienza in a way that I must say wasn't nearly as stylish as her run. Leader is eliminated. Well done, 47. 
You should get back to the safe house. I'll contact you later. Hador's 129 was quickly beaten by Speed's 105, which itself was later surpassed by this amazing run from Magicka. Welcome to Sapienza. We did it. We have managed to locate the leader. However, their identity is unknown. So to assist you, I have to help you in your mission. However, this is no walk in the park. They are on high alert, so you need to be careful. Nevertheless, we do know this. They are participating in a handover. As for their identity, we know that they have brown hair. They are wearing earrings. They are wearing a necklace and glasses. As to habits and vice- 34 seconds. Diana didn't even finish describing the target before Magic goes out of there. Mission complete. A well-deserved point for her. And continuing the trend today of stealing all of Hador's points, newcomer to the challenge, Jill Valentine, beat his 214 by 13 seconds. Things are blowing up. Congratulations, 47. Julia be nearly halved by speeds 122. Be careful, 47. What do you think Nothing. you're doing throwing this stuff around? The leader has been eliminated. You should get back to the safe house. I'll contact you later. Speed also halved Girl Corpse's time in Santa Fortuna, which we can see here. Welcome to Santa Fortuna, Colombia. This is the last stand. We now know the leader's location. However, you will need to do some recon to make sure you get the right target. Nevertheless, we do know this. They are here for a business meeting. As for the little identification we have on them, we know that they have grey hair, they are wearing a hat, they are sporting a tattoo, and wearing a necklace. Furthermore, your target suffers from dehydration. And last but not least, they have a sweet tooth. That's all I have for you at present. Good luck, 47. Good job, 47. You eliminated the leader. Return to the safe house. Collect yourself. I'll be in touch. Once again, insane luck for speed. That's the result of the sheer dedication I love to see in these challenges. Now, while Jill Valentine lost Mumbai, she definitely wasn't out of the game. She started submitting other runs, including a 139 Chung King run that beat Magicka, and this Dubai run that stole another point from Hator. Stand. We now know the leader's location. However, you will need to do some recon to make sure you get the right target. On the other hand, we do know this. They are attending a covert meeting. As for their identity, we know that they have black hair. They are wearing earrings. They are wearing a hat and wearing a necklace. As for characteristics, we know the target is a smoker. And last but not least, use these traits to your advantage. You know what to do, 47. Excellent work, 47. The leader has been eliminated. 47, your target is on to you and is trying to get away. Get back to the safe house. I'll be in touch. Finally, our other newcomer, Linux Penguin, stole Magicka's point from Middleton Creek with this. However, their identity is unknown. So to assist you, I have some intel that might help you on your mission. But they are on high alert, so tread carefully or they will slip away. On the other hand, we do know this. They are here for an exchange. 
We also know that they have brown hair. They are wearing a hat. They are wearing a necklace. And has a tattoo. Furthermore, your target has a sweet tooth. And we know that they suffer from allergies. I hope this will help. You know what to do, 47. Congratulations, 47. The leader is eliminated, sending a clear message. Get back to the safe house. I'll be in touch. And that's the final run from the past 48 hours. Magicka still has a priority of 8 points, Speed is rapidly catching up with 6, Shnum and Jill hold 2 each, Linux Penguin is 1, and Hator has been completely knocked off the leaderboard. Unfortunately, none of this matters because of one letter, H. For those who are new to our community challenges, H is most famous for their love of hammers, which they've channeled into their personal challenge run, Silent Assassin, Pseudo Only, Hammer Only, in which they complete the hardest challenge for each level in the game, Sasso, and do it with only hammers. No keys, no guns, not even coins, only hammer. H is second most famous for their performance in the Versatile Assassin Community Challenge, where, at the last second, they swooped into the competition and stole all the categories using all five murder methods associated with the Versatile Assassin Challenge in only 99 seconds. Just like with Versatile Assassin, H has shown interest in this community challenge, and I've made the mistake of revealing to them that if they win, the next challenge will definitely involve hammers. So today, I'll be making two predictions. One for if H decides to wait a bit before submitting their runs, and another for if they start submitting runs tomorrow. In scenario A, I expect Magicka's plurality to shrink further, but I don't think that will necessarily mean Speed will end up with the most points. A tie between two or even three of the top runners, Magicka, Speed, and Jill, seems possible. Shnam will probably maintain at least a single point out of stubbornness, but I think Hator might steal a point just to be back on the leaderboard. In scenario B, then I wish good luck to everyone involved. H is the endgame crisis, the pre thorin scourge of Casimir's community challenges, and I wouldn't put it past them to post runs stealing all 19 points over the span of a single day. Fortunately, an H victory isn't the end. As I'm formulating the rules for the next community challenge, I'm able to reveal more about it to the participants of the current one, and due to the unique way in which community challenge number 15 is going to work, I can guarantee rewards for the two top winners, so challenge number 14 should remain competitive. I guess I'll see you again in a few days. I've made a mistake. When I compared H to the Prethorin Scourge, I was just trying to make a funny Stellaris reference. But what I've forgotten is in order to have an end game crisis, you need a mid game crisis first. And I seem to have triggered the war in heaven. For an idea of how drastic this has been, just 24 hours ago, there were four runs from the first day that were still standing. That's now being reduced to one. Much like Stellaris, you'd think the main conflict of the War in Heaven would be between the two most powerful entities in the game, in this case Magicka and Speedrunner in Training. However, Speed has gotten burned out on Freelancer, so once again like Stellaris, the real War in Heaven is between one of the most powerful entities in the game and the upstart that's decided to take a stand against them, which means Magicka and Linux Penguin, respectively. Linux and Magicka have each submitted 12 runs since their last update, and all those put together just barely make up over half of the 45 submissions I've had to review in the past 72 hours. So I'll do my best to summarize all these runs succinctly while still showing you guys the best of them. First up is the sheer unsettled brutality of life. Hador and Speed were sending in their final runs. Speed had a go at Mumbai and managed to finish with a 122. Hmm. 
Fifteen minutes later, Hador stole that very point from them with a 105. Both were then crushed under the foot of the war, as Linux Penguin stole Mumbai from Hador in 26 seconds, and then Linux lost to this run from Magicka. However, as we don't know the exact description, this means you will have to do your own recon. Nevertheless, we do know this. They are here for an exchange. As for the description, we know that they have brown hair. They are wearing earrings. They are wearing a hat and glasses. We have further intel that informs us that the target suffers from allergies. I don't even know what to say to these anymore. Well done, 47. This will make anyone think twice before turning to a life of crime. One user by the name of Sabervoix? Sabervoice? Sabervoix sounds better. Anyway, one user by the name of Sabervoix submitted seven records in ridiculously quick succession. In under a day, they took New York, Whittleton Creek, Chongqing, Miami, yes, I pronounce it like that, the Isle of Scale, and the only run we're going to concern ourselves with right now, Santa Fortuna, Colombia. This is the last stand. We now know the leader's location. However, you will need to do some recon to make sure you get the right target. As to why they are here, well, we know this. They are participating in a hand- <laughs> Saber suffers a minor delay here. To make sure everything is properly scored, the game forces a three second delay between when you kill your target and when you're allowed to properly leave the level. But that's San Fortuna done in 23 seconds giving Saber a well-earned point. It's a testament to the dedication of my community that this run is the only record made by Saberva within the past 24 hours that has lasted until now. Saber was also responsible for starting a new side conflict in Dubai. They stole Jill's point in Dubai, but they would quickly be taken from her by Caesar. Caesar's great, because while they're making submissions to the challenge, they have zero intent of winning it. All Caesar wants is to take and hold all the maps set in Muslim-majority nations. Because of this fixation on only two out of a possible 19 categories, this rejection of the big picture, Caesar has become the only person through the entire community challenge to beat their own submission, bringing their 28 second Dubai down to 18 seconds, which is where the record is staying for the moment. Marrakesh was one of the key fronts in the war between Magicka and Linux. First, the illegal run was stolen from Shnam with this 111 from Linux. Is unknown, so to assist you, How I have some it? intel that might help you on your mission. Well. To help you, we have the following information. They are here for a business meeting. As for the description, we know that they have no hair. They are wearing earrings, they are wearing glasses, and wearing a necklace. We have further intel that informs us that the target suffers from dehydration, and they see themselves as a foodie. That's all I have for you at present. Be careful, 47. So what do they do? Prisoners. Uh, never you mind. General Zayden says the man's a traitor and that's all the way to Okay. What the? Damn, what was that? Congratulations, 47. The leader is eliminated, sending a clear message. Get back to the safe house. I'll be in touch. Magica took it for herself in a minute and a second. Linux swiped it back with a 51 second run, but Magica managed to regain the point with this. Welcome to Marrakesh. We now know the leader's current location. However, as we don't know the exact description, this means you will have to do your own recon. However, this is no walk in the park. They are on high alert, so you need to be careful. To help you, we have the following information. They are here for an exchange. We also know that they have blonde hair. They are wearing a necklace. Here, Magica is stealing the keys to an armored personnel carrier outside the school. Your target has a sweet tooth. And they like to read, be it keeping up with the times or simply one. She's using a proximity duck, which explodes whenever it's close to a person instead of needing to be triggered. Ladies, 
Hey, right. You need to hurry. Small way to the truck. Magica is out of there. The entire run done in 48 seconds. Well done, 47. But not good enough. As I've said before, Caesar was very keen on getting the Muslim majority nations, and in a contest dominated by RNG, keenness is the best trait you can have going for you. Caesar beat Magicka by 4 seconds, securing their hold over their two preferred maps for the day. Magicka's original Paris record is yet another casualty of the war. Here's Linux's run of the map from today. Welcome to Paris. We now know the leader's current location. However, Right away, they're intentionally causing chaos near the target. Targets can of course flee the mission, but in the moment where she's just confused, she's the perfect stationary target for Linux's duck. We also We know that they have no hair. They are wearing a necklace. They are wearing earrings. And glasses. As to habits and vices, your target suffers from dehydration. And Amazing run by Linux. Unfortunately for him, Machka decides she really wants the point back. Welcome to Paris. We Despite the timer running at the top, the opening cutscene is not counted in the final time of the game, as is the norm for Hitman. This is used by speedrunners to let the world move a few seconds further along its schedule without affecting the final time. Weirdly, you can see that while the time at the top is reset, the objective timer on the top left has not. Fortunately, we only use the former for this challenge. Identity. We know that they have brown hair. They are sporting a tattoo. They are wearing glasses and wearing a hat. We also know that the target has a tendency to enjoy food. Magica throws her proxy duck at the target. Drash, use these traits to your advantage. And it explodes, killing the target with everything caught on camera. She's out of there in 16 seconds, beating both Linux's time and the opening cutscene. This will make anyone think twice before turning into a life of crime. And with that great run, Magic has regained Paris for the day. Speaking of regaining points, Shinon would stubbornly try to maintain their single point from their favorite map, Miami, just as I predicted. They managed to get a tie with Saber Vaz 102, but then Jill Valentine and Magica went back and forth with the record until Jill submitted this run. The explosive will both panic the target and open the door to this room. Panicking the target will make them flee in a direction that's convenient for Jill. Your target enjoys reading, and they suffer from dehydration. Use these traits. The door gets her access to a key so she can leave via the boat. Good luck. Excellent work, 47. The leader has been eliminated. You need to hurry. The target is trying to escape. Miami done in 39 seconds. Jill's fantastic work earned her the point for Miami, but we'll have to wait to find out if she'll get to keep it. Speaking of Jill, Linux managed to tie with Magica's 47 second Mendoza run, which was broken by a 42 second run from Jill. Sadly for her, Magica had her own tiebreaker in the works. Ah, right. Magica was listening to Spotify during this run, which was picked up by her recording software and content ID, so I can't let the full audio play like you do for other runs. In order to avoid any copyright issues, I will recreate all the noises myself and dub them over the gameplay. Welcome to Vinedo Yates, Argentina. This is it. We've tracked down the Cinder. Anyway, Magica is doing this in a tactical wetsuit, which gives her access to a special exit relatively close to the party. They're here to be killed by you. We also know that Magica throws the duck, they buy NFTs, and they're unreasonably Quack. proud of the and it explodes, killing the target and conveniently panicking everyone so nobody can see her go backstage. Oops. And worst of all, they have a pet dog. Ch -ch -ding. Here Magica uses her deck to open the door, as any fully on mech weapon can do. Oh. She also uses it to open this man's face. Well done, 47. This will make anyone think twice before turning to a life of crime. That's Mendoza with a duck in 40 seconds, earning Magica the point for today. Doom. A similar ordeal would happen in New York, where Saber Va beat Magica's first day record in 51 seconds. The record would be reclaimed by Magica with a 30 second run, but that was beat by this 23 second run submitted by Linux. Welcome to New York. We did it. We have managed to locate the leader. 
However, their identity is unknown. So to assist you, I have some intel that might help you on your... As to why they are here, well, we know this. They are here for a business meeting. We also have the following description on their looks. We know that they have gray... That's New York done in 23 seconds with good old fashioned a favorable RNG. Well done, 47. This will make anyone think twice before turning to... And while we're discussing runs stolen by Linux, Speedrunner and Training's dumb haven record was sadly beaten by this run. Welcome to the Maldives. This is it. We've tracked down the Syndicate leader. You need to identify the target first. Nevertheless, we do know this. They are here to attend a business meeting. As for their identity, we know that they have brown hair. 15 seconds with the spawn right next to both the target and the exit. You couldn't ask for RNG any better than that. Good RNG was also a factor in Linux's new record run on- Colorado. Good work, 47. We finally tracked down the Syndicate leader's whereabouts. However, we do not know the exact identity of the target, so you'll have to do some recon. On the other hand, we do know this. They are here to attend a business meeting. As for their identity, we know that they have blonde hair. They are wearing glasses. They are wearing a hat and earrings. As for characteristics, we know- After killing the target just around the corner and leaving through convenient exit, Linux has done Colorado in 29 seconds. Speaking of going around corners, check out Linux's Sapienza run. Welcome to Sapienza. This is the last stand. We now know the leader's location. However, you will need to do some recon to make sure you get the right target. But they are on high alert, so tread carefully or they will slip away. To help you, we have the following information. They are attending a covert meeting. We also have the following description on their looks. We know that they have no hair. They are wearing a hat. They are sporting a tattoo and wearing a necklace. <laughs> Furthermore, your target is a smooth. With Haven, New York, Sapienza, and Colorado taken by Linux, that's three points for him. Just to make it clear, I call this good RNG, but what it really is is persistence. It's completing an ungodly amount of syndicates over and over again to re-roll for better spawns. And that absurd amount of work put in by every contestant here just cannot be appreciated enough in this video. These records aren't earned by luck, they're earned by putting in the time, having the skill to make what you can of what you have, and perhaps most importantly, being aware of your own limitations. That's why Speedrunner in training stops submitting runs entirely. She just burned out and won't be able to play for the rest of the challenge. It's always better to move at a pace that's slower, yet sustainable for you, than it is to always go as fast as possible. Like endurance racing. On the topic of racing, by climbing up and immediately down a drainpipe, Merch and Deese has just won their first point in the scale in an appropriate 47 seconds. Well done. Stealing the record from Magica, who stole it from Saber of Law. It's not going to be the last time today a point is stolen from Magica either. Linux also snuck in this 18 second run on Berlin. However, their identity is unknown. So to assist you, I have some intel that might be <laughs> On the other hand, we do know this. They are participating in a handover. As for the little identification we have on them, we know that they have no hair. And the last but not least impressive run from today is Chung King done by Jill Valentine. Chung King. Good work, 47. We finally tracked down the Syndicate leader's whereabouts. However, we do not know the exact identity of the target, so you'll I find it really funny that everyone's taking all the time prestige objectives and not actually doing anything to restart the timer. They're just doing the mission fast. ...and a business meeting. As for their identity, we know that they have black hair. They are wearing earrings. They are wearing a necklace and glasses. We have further intel that informs us oh, that the target is a smoker. And they have a dehydration. I hope these tells can be used to your advantage. Be careful. The leader is eliminated. And with 47 being very careful in his new moped, that's the last run from today. Impressive, 47. You have any of you guys been keeping track of which record from the first day hasn't been beaten yet? 
You'd think it would be from a difficult map like Colorado or a bad one like Marrakesh, but no, the only map that hasn't been beaten since the first day is actually Ambrose Island, which was taken by Magica with this run in 24 seconds. That's not just good work, that's work that lasts. And that's the end of day six of the challenge. As of now, Magica is in the lead with six points, Linux is catching up with five, Jill Valentine, Speedrun Training, and Caesar have two each, and Sabrevoir and Merch and Dees each have a single point to themselves. The sum of all the best runs right now is only 9 minutes 13 seconds, which is just insane. I was doubting that we'd be able to get in under 10 minutes, but the ridiculous time and effort put in by Magica, Linux, Jill, and others has managed to reduce the median run's time to 28 seconds. There's only one more day left. To be honest, I have no idea what's going to happen next. I'll see you then. But first, as this challenge comes to an end, I'm starting to get a better idea of what our next community challenge is going to look like, and I think it's going to be good. The only problem is, I need you to help me do it. On the screen now are IDs for a contract on Chungking. If you want to participate in the next community challenge, I need you to record yourself doing this contract, make sure to include the results screen, upload your run to YouTube, and complete the Google form pinned to my Discord's community challenge channel within 48 hours of this video's release. And of course, even if you don't want to participate, the server is still a friendly place to be. We got your high quality voice chat, your low quality voice chat, a shit posting channel where you can only send one message every hour, and a gay cult dedicated to being silly. Now please enjoy the final chapter of Community Challenge number 14, in which everyone shows their hand, H makes his return, and the winners are finally announced. This is it. It's here. The final day. Today was relatively uncompetitive. We only got around 19 submissions, which isn't much considering that today is the day of the dump. Ah, the day of the dump. My favorite quirk of these challenges. You see, all the submissions you guys have seen so far have been made publicly. Anyone can see everyone's run, and they even have access to my spreadsheet containing every run ever done for their convenience. I mandate public submissions because this challenge isn't just about who can win, but also about how fast we as a community can possibly do the challenge. So I'm fine if some rats are adapted every now and again, if it means we can finish a showdown on every map in Freelancer in 7 minutes and 34 seconds. Unfortunately, not everyone fully complies with this vision. Some people build up their submissions over time and submit them on the final due date. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this. On one hand, it can be a bit of an anti-climax to have a heated competition between two people for days, and have it end in someone else taking the dub at the last second. On the other hand, this challenge's day of the dump resulted in a lot more suspense, as all of you will be seeing soon. Our first run of the day is in Dartmoor, where Merch and Dees did the level in 45 seconds, beating Speedrunner and Training's old record there by one second. This point would be poached by Magica in this run. Welcome to Thornbridge Manor. We did it. We have managed to locate the leader. However, their identity is unknown. So to assist you, I have some intel that might help you on your mission. But they are on high alert. So tread carefully or they will slip away. To help you, we have the following information. They are here for an exchange. As for their identity, we know that they have blonde hair. They are wearing a hat. They are wearing a necklace and wearing a necklace. As to habits and voices, it's obviously unoptimized. Magica has earned the point. Impressive, 47. Merch also submitted this run from Marrakesh. This is the last stand. We now know the leader's location. However, you will need to do some recon to make sure you get the right target. But they are on high alert. So tread carefully, or they will slip away. On the other hand, we do know this. They are attending a secret meeting. As for their identity, we know that they have black hair. They are wearing ears, they are wearing glasses, and wearing a hat. As for characteristics, we know the target suffers from dehydration. And they also submitted a run in Mendoza that optimized Magica's time with the same spawn and strategy by about a second. Great runs, two points for merch. And the final normal run before the dumping begins is from Magica. 
but went back to her roots in New York, included an almost entire minute faster than her very first run here. She started by the lobby, threw her duck at our target in the teller hall, and exfiltrated the mission. And now for the day of the dump to begin properly. First up is Linux, who submitted four runs in the final two hours, the first of which was on Bangkok. Welcome to Bangkok. It's time to put an end to them. The leader is currently operating in the area. However, we have very little interest. <laughs> Nevertheless, we do know this. They are here for an exchange. As for the description, we know that they have black hair. They are wearing glasses. They With a bang up Bangkok in 17 seconds, Linux wins their first point of the day. Next up is Santa Fortuna. Welcome to Santa Fortuna, Colombia. This is it. We've tracked down the syndicate leader. You need to identify the target first. On the other hand, we do know this. They are here for an exchange. After getting that final unintentional guard kill, that Santa Fortuna done in an absurd 12 seconds. Speaking of 12 seconds... Welcome to the Scepter, Dubai. This is it. We've tracked down the syndicate leader. You need to identify the target first. However, they are on high alert, so you need to be careful. Dubai done in 12 seconds, meaning a quarter of Linux's time was spent just waiting by the elevator for the game to process the kill. And now, for Linux's final dumped run. Welcome to Whittleton Creek. This is it. We've tracked down the syndicate leader. You need to identify the target first. To help you, we have the following information. They are here for a business meeting. As for their identity, we know that they have gray hair, they are wearing a hat, they are wearing a necklace, and has a tattoo. As to habits and vices, their target has a tendency to enjoy food of any kind, and they suffer from dehydration. I'm sorry we don't have more. Godspeed, 47. Congratulations, 47. The leader is eliminated. After that struggle with the exit, Linux has gotten his fourth and final point of the day from Wilton Creek. Unfortunately for him, it was around an hour or two between when he made his submissions and when the challenge ended. Welcome to Whittleton Creek. Good work, 47. We finally tracked down the syndicate leader's whereabouts. However, we do not know the exact identity of the target, so you'll have to do some recon. On the other hand, we do know this. They are attending a secret meeting. As for the little identification we have on them, we know that they have no hair. They are wearing glasses. They are wearing a hat and has a tattoo. We have further intel that informs us that the target suffers from dehydration. But worst of all, they are paranoid. That's all I have for you at present. Well done, 47. This got Linux concerned, so he submitted this. That's Linux Penguin's house done in 12 seconds, 13 seconds after his penalty for not showing the results screen. Unfortunately, he doesn't get a point for this. Speaking of having no point, Schnom was determined to waste my time, so they submitted a 6 minute 38 second New York, complete with dramatic intro text, the clown suit, satanic Diana. They have red hair, they are wearing a hat, they are wearing earrings, and wearing a necklace. Going to the vendor to buy a duck, realizing that he doesn't have a duck and buying the closest thing he has, the slowest sneaking ever done by a man donning rainbow socks, killing the target without a duck in a way that compromised them. Your target is trying to get away. Move. Realizing that the person they just used their explosive on isn't actually the target, going on a rampage with the weakest gun in the game, killing their actual target with a gun as they're actively escaping, Going to a meeting with the CEO of a major banking company. I'm here for a meeting with Director Savalas. I don't think it. Oh, yes, of course. That's right, go inside. Thank you. Getting fired from someone else's job by aforementioned CEO. Tell me, do you knit those sweaters yourself? Or does your wife? A man needs a hobby, Miss Savalas. Failing one of the easiest timed objectives in Freelancer during a speedrun, crashing the stock market while inside a man, big couple goals, 
and finally, doing me a mercy by ending the run and their self. That's New York done in 6 minutes 38 seconds. Silly out of 10 job schnob, no points awarded. Fun fact, this is the only submission made during the entire challenge that I've had to totally disqualify and refuse to include in the spreadsheet. Our final runs are from Carther, who submitted these in the final 10 minutes. The first of their two runs was on Bangkok, and proved on Elixir's run from earlier by one second. One point for Carther. The second was on Scale, which I'm only just now realizing was done in hardcore mode. Jesus Christ! That means that if Carther fails to kill an assassin during the run, they can't finish the mission. But they are on high alert, so tread carefully or they will slip away. Nevertheless, we do know this. They are participating in a handover. As for their identity, we know that they have black hair. They are wearing a hat. They are wearing glasses and has a tattoo. We have further intel that informs us that the target has a tendency to enjoy food of any kind. And last but not least, they have a sweet tooth. I hope this will help. Good luck. Carther pauses to make sure they did their objectives and they're in the clear. That scale done in an impressive 41 seconds. Carther's work gets them a second point. And with that, I think it's safe to say we're done. At the end of the final day, Jill Valentine has two points for Chungking in Miami. Carther is two for Bangkok in the Isle of Scale, and Merchandise also is two for Marrakesh in Mendoza. Linux is in second place with six points for Haven, Colorado, Dubai, Sapienza, Berlin, and Santa Fortuna, meaning that with seven points from Ambrose Island, Hokkaido, Paris, Mumbai, Dartmoor, New York, and Wilton Creek, the winner of Community Challenge number 14 is... Hang on, just needed to check that. Shit. At the very last minute, H has submitted seven runs, which could potentially steal the win from Magicka. Let's review these together, with the first being Dubai. H's run here is identical to Linux's, the same starting location, the same target spawn, and even the same 3 second wait by the elevator. That's Dubai done in 12 seconds, tying with Linux's run. Linux's point is to be split in half and shared with H, giving H half a point and reducing Linux to 5.5. Next up is Berlin. This is the last stand. We now know the leader's location. However, okay. you will need to do some recon to make sure you get the right target. However, they're on high alert, so you need to be careful. As to why they are here, we know this. They are participating in- Berlin down in 15 seconds, beating another one of Linux Penguin's records by three. That's H with one and a half points, and Linux with 4.5. Magicka's seven might not be safe for much longer, though, because next up is Wilton Creek. Welcome to Whittleton Creek. This is it. We've tracked down the- Here they use stair sliding, a micro-strategy used to speed up 47's walking speed on staircases. Park, they are on high alert, so you need to be careful. On the other hand, we do know this. They are- Target down and mission complete. H is out of there in a ludicrous 19 seconds, decisively defeating Magicka's 30. That gives H 2.5 points and leaves Magicka with 6. Next up is Colorado, where H needs to compete with Linux's stunning 29 seconds. Welcome to Colorado. We did it. We have managed to locate the leader. However, their identity is unknown. So to assist you, I have some intel that might help you on your mission. Nevertheless, we do know this. They are participating in a handover. We also know that they have gray hair. They are wearing a necklace. They are wearing earrings and glasses. As to habits and vices, your target suffers from dehydration. And we know that they suffer from allergies. I hope this will help. Good luck. Colorado finished in 22 seconds, giving each 3.5 points and Linux 4.5. Next was Miami, where H used an optimized version of Jill's strategy to cut down on time, reducing the run to 33 seconds. 
Jill now has only one point, while H is tied with one except 4.5, and Magicka stands tall with six. Speaking of standing tall, next is the Isle of Scale, which is currently Carthur's with his 41 second run. Welcome to the Isle of Scale. It's time to put an end to them. The leader is currently operating in the area. However, we have very little intel on- He's shooting twice next to the target, which is enough to trigger them to panic and attempt evacuation. Put them on high alert, so you need to be tactical. On the other hand, we do know this. They are attending a covert meeting. We also have the following description on their looks. We know that they have no hair. They are wearing you. H triggering the evacuation has helpfully lured them straight to the helicopter that H can use to leave. Tendency to enjoy food of any kind, and they smoke. And that's scale done by H in 35 seconds, leaving a trail of chaos in their wake. This is it. The final run. Linux has been knocked down from 6 points to 3.5, Magicka from 7 to 6, and H has 5.5 points. And this is H's 7th and final run on Dartmoor, currently held by Magicka. If they win this, they win the challenge. His whereabouts. However, we do not know the exact identity of the target, so you'll have to do some recon. But this is not going to be easy. Previous actions have put them on high alert, so you need to be tactical. To help you, we have the following information. They are attending- H has just used Gritty's strategy from day one to jump off the building right as the target dies. They are wearing wounds. They are wearing a hat and wearing a necklace. We also know that the target has a sweet tooth. And we know that they suffer from allergies. I hope this will help. Oh, shit. Don't disappoint. That's Dartmoor done in 42 seconds, which is absurdly fast, but not fast enough to beat Magicka's 29 second run from earlier in the day. That leaves our leaderboard with six people. In joint fifth place is Carther and Jill Valentine, each with one point. In fourth is Merch and Deese, with a respectable two points. Linux is in third place with three full points, and a tie in Dubai with our second place contestant, H, who also had five full points. The winner of Community Challenge number 14 is Magica. She's earned her first point on the Community Challenge leaderboard and has been assigned the duty of leading Team Fish through Community Challenge number 15. Impressive, 47. H, as a reward for winning second place, has been appointed leader of Team Hammer. What the hell does that mean? Find out next video in Community Challenge number 15. In the meantime, thank you to everyone who made this challenge possible. I got 95 submissions on this challenge, spanning over 80 minutes, and it's been a blast reviewing every last one of them. I've been Cassie, thank you all for watching, and have a nice day. Oh my god, I'm finally done. I can go back to playing CK2 now.